Hi guys, Oliver here. In my last video I showed you how I took photographs of dandelion seeds with water droplets on it. I showed you how I improvised it, how I created the shop. And uh, I also promised you I would create a tutorial video about the processing. So today we're gonna have some work to do in Lightroom, in Photoshop. We're gonna do the focus stacking. Are you ready for it? Let's go. The moment of truth is now. I've transferred everything on the computer and uh, done a little preparation. And then we're having the start of our first little series here. You see, um, the only part that's in focus are really the bits which are here closest to the camera. And then we've started working our way in. And uh, when we're reaching a position like here, yeah, this, we already have, without any modification, quite a little piece of art, some sort of abstract art with a bit of work on it, um, potentially present that. But we've been working our way through and you see with every image we have a different part of that little seed in focus. And uh, this is what we're going to do, we're putting them together because I really want to have them all sharp. Then we have the start of our next series here and you see the, the colors have already been, been changing. Now we have our first flower in the background and we have these little droplets here, the same principle applies. Um, from the foreground to the background with every image we have a different part of the image in focus. Speed that up a little and all the way to the back. And then we have a third series with a different flower in the background. And uh, the same here, when we're working our way in, the focus is shifting. We've taken quite a few here. That's going to bring my computer down on his knees. And I also can see the reflections here in the droplets. They will work very, very well. Good. To start with, we're taking the first image of uh, the, the first series I, I want to put together, I want to focus stack. And let's see how we're going to do it. First of all, I'm going to make a few little basic adjustments. Let's start with a little added contrasts. I'll take the highlights out, bring in the shadows in, more contrast. Finding our white point. Oops, here we are already. There is one little bit that's a bit blown out. So here, not overdoing. And the same with the blacks. I want it a bit dreamy. Um, next step, I want to add a little texture and clarity, but only on uh, the seat itself. I'll be very generous with my radial filter here. Inverted, adding a bit of texture, adding a bit of clarity, and maybe a little dehaze even. Okay, what about the colors? Let's make it a little more vibrant. You know, I have a fondness for strong and bold colors. And finally, I have our curves adjustment here. I want to bring in the lights a little more just another subtle way of adding contrast here but taking them highlights further out what about the exposure do I like it darker and too dark I think that's fine here and uh, finally when we're zooming in here we're having quite a bit of color noise so I'm introducing some color noise reduction and that looks quite all right good <clears throat> next step because we have quite a few images here i didn't count them even so i mark them all for the entire series and synchronize the settings check all and synchronize and we're done already with that next step i'm not stacking it in lightroom we're doing that in photoshop so we have the entire series of images marked i'm right clicking on it edit in Photoshop but we open it as layers in Photoshop. 
otherwise it would just uh, yeah add or open every single image as a single image in Photoshop we would, we would have to bring them together manually so this process opening in Photoshop is gonna take a while so I'm having a coffee quite a while later we have all the images in Photoshop this is where we are now and as you can see there are quite a few layers in here goodness me that's gonna bring that machine down on his knees okay um, one of the effects we can see because uh, with every single shot we've slightly changed the focus we moved into the image and uh, what we will discover is an effect called focus breathing with changing the focus every time it will slightly change the focal length and uh, the effect if I'm you see that good so if we would have to uh, fix that manually it would be a total nightmare but thank Adobe we have Photoshop so what I'm doing first <clears throat> I'm selecting all of the layers at once and then uh, edit auto align we let Photoshop do quite a bit of work in trying to align and match all the structures in all of these photos depending on the speed of your machine <clears throat> It's going to take a while, so we have another waiting moment. So, Photoshop's coming up with this result. Very often it works quite well, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see what we have. Um, first of all, I can see there are these frames here, which is a clear indication that we have some of the images have been modified rather heavily. Yeah, there we go you can see that so it's been rotated it's been uh, modified in size but to be honest it looks rather well aligned make sure where all the layers are visible and now before we are performing the next step I wanna save these images because the next step we're gonna let Photoshop auto stack everything again sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't and to have a little safety net I simply duplicate all of these layers yes it sounds like madness but uh, in a moment you will see why I'm doing this so the original layers are still there and uh, still selected the next step edit auto blend layers Photoshop um, identifies automatically that this is not a panorama and that I want to stack these images and let's just do that again depending on the speed of your machine that's going to be a little waiting time and uh, yeah maybe it's time for something to drink so <clears throat> when we're reaching half time in the progress bar usually it speeds up a little so hopefully we have it done soon bear in mind it's a vast amount of data that uh, has to be processed here so the moment of surprise is close and there we go this is what Photoshop in the auto alignment and auto stacking is coming with good <clears throat> now if there are little glitches like that part here or that part um, that can be easily fixed so we don't do not need the other layers for that if there would be some proper stacking mess up this is what i would use uh, the other images for good what we're doing now we are flattening what we've done here which is now the copy layer here and i suggest we do not need the others so there's no need to demonstrate anything today uh, we simply delete them final touches first let's crop that in the way I want it there we go that looks all right and now we're simply fixing a few things but I'm not doing that in my original layer I'm creating a new one just a duplicate of the existing one and what we are using is yeah, a little brush so that is removed that is fixed 
Let's zoom in. Yeah, here are a few uh, a few bits that need to be fixed. And this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, this is what I want. And I'm simply going through that process now. And I speed it up. <clears throat> I don't want to bore you to death with uh, the entire process. So let me just finish that work. And then we're coming back with a final image. Right, looking at this, I would say this is our final image here and I'm very very pleased with the result. As I mentioned before, um, Photoshop with the auto alignment is sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't work. And um, depending on how accurate and how precise you want it, you may have to put in a little Photoshop work. Uh, this is what I've done here and uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. Let's uh, do the other two sets and uh, I'll present you the final ones. Okay, we did it. In the last video we've taken, well, we've created these photographs together and today I showed you how to process these images. I do remember the first time I heard the term focus stacking, I thought, oh my god, that's magic, that's wizardry. As you've seen, it's not. I've demonstrated you today how to do it with just basic functionality built in in Photoshop. And, um, yeah, as you've seen here, in most cases, that's more than sufficient to get to pleasing results. Anything beyond that point is uh, more advanced processing, and uh, that's certainly not part of today's video. Now, there is no excuse, guys. I really want you to show me your amazing macro photographs, because you now you've got all the tools you need. So we're at the end for today. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you just want to tell me how awesome I am, do the same. And of course, do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I really want to see you guys again soon.